And today, the TT Artisan 50 millimeter um, f1.4 tilt. Um, so that's a lens I've been using for quite a few months now to in order to do this review, but also for myself, of course, like as usual. Um, what I found interesting with this one is it's basically pretty, uh, the aperture is pretty wide and it's got this tilt effect. So it's, it's not a perspective compensation mechanism, but basically by being able with this mechanism to tilt the focal plane, you'll get those weird toy-like effects on, on your photos or you'll be able to better um, separate, segregate one focal plane uh, in your picture. Um, and yeah, basically you can tilt and rotate here. So TT Artisan, for those who know or have already tried, have make for pretty good lenses. They're pretty well made, well built. Really nice focus uh, ring, the feeling is good. It's a fully manual lens, of course. Um, maybe this mechanism for the rotation and fixing the rotation, as well as the one for the tilt, uh, here you can see, could have been maybe done a little bit better, but yeah, it's a pretty cheap lens, uh, um, economically speaking. So it does work. It's uh, could have been better. Maybe it'll enhance it in the future. But in the meantime, it's a, it's a really cool lens to use. And, and let's go see a few examples um, of the results. So those first two pictures, um, they're part of the first maybe 10 photos I took. And directly, you want to have fun with the tilting option of the lens. So here it is, full, so full aperture at 1.4. And moving to horizontal plane, so you can rotate it, uh, but you you kind of create this false sense of increased depth simply because your your focal plane is not uh, perpendicular uh, anymore to your sensor. But you can do this kind of interesting thing. I'm not sure uh, here. I'm tilting to the extreme, but uh, I'm not sure it uh, makes sense artistically. But definitely you can do it, and that's what kind of picture you will get. Interestingly, also the bokeh is quite soft, a little bit circular, so there's some character to this lens. Again, it's a cheap lens in terms of price, and it offers lots of options, and here I'm really testing the, the tilting, but uh, and through the months I've tested it in my travels and moved quite a bit with it, just to see if it, if it uh, worked and how it worked. Uh, here, for example, without the tilting, we can see that it has a definite character. It's kind of a glow in, in the high dynamic uh, uh, lighting situations, like on this uh, engine on a plane with a very intense snow uh, while landing. Um, that's a high speed uh, aperture, aperture a high speed uh, exposure. Or on the right, something more subtle. Uh, really good geometry, good color rendering, and some character. Uh, that's something I'm going to emphasize. Um, here by night, uh, it's an f1.4 lens, so with a modern sensor, you can go pretty low in ambient light situations. Uh, that's in Reykjavik, uh, just after the snow. It's probably 1 a.m. I'm not sure the the church uh, clock shows two different times. So, but I think it was around 1 a.m. where no one's there. So. So, as we can see on the next picture, no markings on the snow. And here are two examples. On the left, I don't tilt the lens, so you have this sort of circular bokeh again, which I kind of find interesting, uh, kind of old school. And on the right, that's me tilting the horizontal plane. Um, and you definitely can see the difference with what kind of effect, kind of effect you can do uh, on a similar scene. Um, also, here, going into the streets of Reykjavik, trying to figure out things I could do with this uh, tilting lens. Then, uh, apart from the fact that the screw mechanism to block the tilting and the rotation is kind of awkward, it's not very precise, it's okay. But it's, uh, it's not a real pleasure to use. But you definitely can do what you want and choose the angling of your lens quite precisely um, to render this kind of uh, effect. Um, increasing artificially the, the focal depths. Um, I'm not sure it's artificial, but it's definitely a tilting of the plane. Um, here, another example where I'm in, uh, most of my work is in portrait format. So here it's in, in landscape format. And you can see you can have this kind of toy-like effect by tilting the plane and choosing the angle um, to this 
this is kind of an interesting picture because probably wouldn't have been interesting at all without the tilting. Um, again, you can go more subtly into the tilt, uh, either like on the picture on the left to try to increase the depth of fill fields by putting the plane simply on the subject you're taking a picture of. Um, this added to the 1.4 aperture, which is pretty large, uh, will give you this kind of effect, or simply by uh, in a situation like this one, just to try to push this uh, sense of depth uh, without uh, the window, uh, for example, on this cloud layer. Um, the, the tilt can be quite useful uh, more subtly. And I've tried to use it in different occasions, really taking months to see if I like to use it. I actually like to use it. I think it's a really interesting lens to bring with you. I'm definitely keeping it. Uh, it's got some minuses in terms of uh, the quality, but it's uh, kind of old school, but really some very interesting artistic perspective when you can tilt or just simply when it's not tilted, it's got some character. As you can see here, I, I chose a plane which kind of emphasizes the parts of the picture I want. And, and yeah, that works. Uh, I mean, uh, you can do it. Uh, also, um, here I used it for, because of the color rendering and the style of the bokeh, I thought, oh, I might use it for this part of my work, which is kind of separated, which is hypertight. It's some kind of studio work on lightings I've been using for years. Um, it's an ongoing project. Um, the softness of this lens, the way it renders, uh, I found really interesting. And using this tilt uh, mechanism uh, in a more subtle way and can give you this kind uh, of result. Um, same thing here also, just to show that it, it kind of glows in high contrast situations, but if you desaturate, it's certain light, certain lights, certain colors that might glow, but you really can have some really strongly defined and contrasty results um, using the lens, for example, in black and white. That's the same picture, only desaturated on, on the right. Um, so I would find it a very interesting portrait lens. Um, here again, doing street photography with no tilt. Um, the 1.4 is really useful to differentiate the, the focal planes and the, the, your focus range, the subjects, the different uh, layers of your composition. Um, works well, great uh, color rendering. Again, it's a cheap, it's a cheap lens, all things considered. It's it hasn't got the precision of some really high-level 50 uh, millimeter lens, but it's got a rendering that's quite of its own. Uh, I think I haven't got any other lens that really has both the precision and the softness and the circular bokeh. So even so, it's got some pretty... I actually saw quite a lot of bad press about it. It's always defined as a entertaining lens, but uh, I think it's more than that. It's a really useful lens, uh, lots of character, even so it's not incredibly precise in the middle and uh, in the corners. But you can see for architecture, good geometry, good color rendering, or like on the picture on the right with the diffusion, because it's a high contrast situation, and the circular bokeh, you get something uh, with its own really uh, defined character. And finally, two last pictures for the examples, just for the geometry and the overall rendering. I think it's a pretty precise lens, and um, yeah, I can only recommend that kind of lens, which pushes your creativity, offers you options you might not have with other lenses, and gives you the basics. So, yeah. <laughs>